What is your connection with the mocktail bar that has sprung up where your previously undeclared Gilettos ice cream lounge used to be? And will you step down while under, under investigation by the Labour Party? There isn't. No. So Secondly, uh, the mocktail bar is my brother's, so I don't understand why that would be an issue for anyone. There's many established businesses in Orkney. So it's, it's important to know that the leader is honest and honest. you didn't declare the last business the Gilettos ice cream you didn't declare it till Rajamia brought it up and then suddenly then you did no it's not that I didn't declare it it's because the five, when, when members elected members fill out the declaration form they do it with an officer from the constitutional services the advice to the community I'm glad to ask this question because it actually gives me the right to apply I've never had it before so, because the, the officer from constitutional services has said, because it, I was getting no profit or I wasn't being paid, that I didn't have to declare it. So, I didn't at that point. But actually, it was noted. So, there was a note at the council that it was, that it was there, but it was advice from the officer that I took. We're not experts, we're residents that stand up to be held accountable. You're absolutely right and legitimate in asking me that question. But we take advice from professionals uh, when we complete these forms. Um, and that's what I did, so I acted upon that advice. But also, by the time that it was brought to my attention that it should have been declared, or, or, or that the advice that was given to me at that, at that time was wrong, I rectified it straight away. But I also didn't find it appropriate to then stand up and start saying, oh, it's such a body, it's such a body, I just like did what was asked of me. It was then, it, I then referred myself to standard to build that confidence from the public and there was an outcome of that review which was um, satisfactory. Yeah, it didn't look like that. My second question, and I have to come here because you don't answer any emails that I send. Um, so the second question is, your friend Mohammed Nadim posted on Facebook, I'm not into politics, Aruj, but we go back long, long way. And if anyone, and I mean anyone, gives you grief in any way, just give me a show, and believe me, they won't be voting ever again. You then replied, oh, thank you. I'm blessed to have friends like you. Love that, love that, love that. So it's all just that you should... Are you, you encouraging threats? When you ask me a question, you should afford me the time to respond. I'm, I'm letting you answer. So, no, of course I don't, I, I don't encourage threats. That response... You just thanked him for what he said. Excuse me, can you answer the question? Let's have a reasonable meeting. Excuse me, I'm speaking as well. Asked, just just remember, you work for us, not the other way around, sweetheart. Ask your question, come please. Uh, let me I'm asked, I've asked him, she can you answer. Don't see she's buttoning me now. But you're not allowing me to answer. Go on. This is like, I'm just going to be responsible. Yeah. You can responsibly ask your question, but then you have to afford me the time to reply to that question. You can't answer it for me or, or try to... Go on then, answer them please. So of course I don't encourage threats, but actually my response to him was open to interpretation and you told him to take whatever you wanted from that, but mine was to thank him for his support. Because I'm sure you would do the same if you were constantly getting attacked every single day. I do get attacked. We all get attacked. I don't know that you do. We all get attacked, love. But as I said, pardon? We all get attacked. That's fine. You've not answered my question. No, you said we all get attacked, so you think that's fine. No, I don't. We all need protection. Well, we asked, all need protection. And I'm saying that you've taken whatever interpretation you wanted from that. No. That's not what it was. No. Would you like me to read it again, what he yeah, said, and then what you said? Could I, could I perhaps just interject there? So, uh, our chief executive, I've been here four months. I knew nobody when I arrived. I was interviewed by three political parties Labour, Conservative, and Liberal Democrat. I was offered the job, which I wanted the job. I've done four months. I've ensured 
a full review of, of scrutiny. I was very well aware of all of this stuff on social media, and I've reviewed and very satisfied with what's been I'm not being funny, though. You're not I'm from Oldham. Old you don't know what's been going on. So tonight's meeting is about the residents of Royton North, Royton South, Crompton... And, and I'm from Royton. It's and meet the leader. ...and for this area. Yeah, I'm asking questions. You've asked a question, then I've answered it. If you don't like to reply, you need to have answer. That's You're right. dishonest. According to you, you're entitled to that opinion. I'm sorry you feel that way, but you're entitled to it. That's how you feel I am. You've encouraged a threat on on Facebook. He said he will stop anyone from voting, and you said thank you. Well, you tell me then. You would please explain what he means then. I'm giving you the chance to explain what he means. What was it? What were you referring to? Oh, his support for me. So he's allowed to give threats. He's allowed to give threats then. He's give a threat. You thanked him. You thanked him for it. That's encouraging violence in Oldham. But you're the leader of the of Oldham. And it's my answer. Bad leader. Anyway, any, any other questions? Yes. I'm Dorothy Lord. I'm a whistleblower and I live in Royton. My house is unhabitable. I've got rats. I've got damp. I've told you everything. You ignore all my letters. You ignore my phone calls. And nobody will listen to a whistleblower. I've spoken to another councillor today. And even I feel he doesn't believe me. That's the first thing they do. Can you tell me why? It's the under fives I was trying to protect. I was dismissed from a preschool in Wrighton for doing so and refused another job in a preschool setting in Shaw, I Crompton in Shaw, because she found out I was a whistleblower and I was protecting the under fives. Tell me who safeguards the under fives? Because even the ombudsman doesn't know. Okay, what we have here is managed to redirect to traumatic social services who are normally supporting you already, who will think that you vote after this. I've been ignored since 2013, Arouge. When you came on board, I thought I had a chance and I was naive. But I did give you a chance. I had to write to you twice on a safeguarding concern for the under fives before I got an answer. To me, that's a safeguarding concern in itself. I'm sorry, I want to give you a chance. I want Oldham to be a safe place for the under fives. And I'm being starved. Three and a half years, I've had no money. I've been took to Thameside, Kent, the courts, three times for not paying me council tax. Disgusting. But I were good enough to safeguard the under fives. You don't want a Arthur Lindbergh Joe You don't want another baby Peter Connolly, a Victoria Clamby, Doreen Mason. How far back do you want me to go? I worked there 25 years and all I did was my job. You tell me I can't get a job in Oldham now. And do you know what? I don't want one. I don't trust anybody. I've been giving details. I've got a load of stuff. Nobody wants Mr. See, boy, this is what it comes to. Mr. McMahon won't look at Omar Roach. This is what it comes to. And then, oh, we'll talk to you afterwards. Along with Jane, is that okay? Yes. Please. Of course, that's fine. Jane and I have a conversation after this meeting. Does anybody else have a question? You did well. You're all right. You're upset. There's a lot of material about the same thing to be done. Yeah. Will there be a formal consultation? I'm sorry. There's a consultation that's been going on for the last couple of months and it finishes um, at the end of December. Mm -hmm. and we've, we've, we've given several opportunities for residents to get in touch with them. It's had quite high uptake as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. But just, just, just to add to it, so you don't feel you've, you've missed it, but, yeah. but if you take your details, we'll have uh, consultation events in the town centre, in Spindle Shopping Centre, mm -hmm. online. We've done videos of what we hope to deliver. Mm -hmm. But certainly, there's information around as well. But again, um, we can certainly give you some information Good later good. this good evening good. Uh, and invite you to, uh, to offer your views. Thank you. Sorry, um, go on. Uh, I just want to pick up really on, on our point about the indemnification clause and the chat saying we need to talk about the chat in all these things. I think there's some amazing projects in the pipeline. 
Um, I know the council already looked at what in terms of starting to um, extend to the road. But I just wonder if we can be down on because sometimes someone might tick a box by having employees in place. Yeah. If we go to that, that extent of that employee policy or whatever. But the profits to what size of that employee or seems like a large organisation to <coughs> to have one company that is, is a company that gets 